Xin chào tất cả các bạn. Hôm nay chúng ta lại cùng gặp nhau để cùng lắng nghe bài giảng từ các thầy cô của các trường đại học và học viện công nghệ Ireland. Các bạn hẳn đã nghe về một điều rằng Ireland được gọi là xứ sở ngọc lục bảo. Có nghĩa là một xứ sở có như rất là nhiều màu xanh và người ta còn có cái, cái, cái cách gọi là có 50 sắc thái xanh. À, và nguyên nhân mà hòn đảo này lại có nhiều màu xanh như vậy là vì hòn đảo có rất là nhiều mưa. À, lượng mưa, à, cái số ngày mưa ở trong năm à, chiếm rất là nhiều. Tuy thì có thể là cho đối với à, mọi người thì có vẻ là không được... À, dễ chịu cho lắm nhưng mà cái điều này lại giúp cho thiên nhiên Ireland có cái màu xanh vô tận và những cái đồng cỏ uh, vô cùng màu mỡ là cái uh, nền tảng uh, cho nền nông nghiệp uh, vô cùng phát triển uh, nó chiếm một cái uh, tỷ trọng lớn trong uh, uh, GDP của đất nước và um, giúp Ireland trở có trở thành một trong những cái nước uh, xuất khẩu về uh, Uh, nông sản thực phẩm uh, rất lớn ở Bắc Bán Cầu. Uh, ngày hôm nay chúng ta sẽ uh, cùng nhau khám phá cái phía cạnh này của cái hòn đảo nhỏ. Uh, chúng chị xin mời các bạn lắng nghe bài giảng của thầy uh, Maurice O'Sullivan từ uh, khoa Food Science của University College Cork và cô NASA O'Connor từ phòng quốc tế của trường sẽ giới thiệu cho chúng ta biết ngành food science là nghĩa là gì, sinh viên sẽ được học gì từ những ngành đó và vì sao ngành food science lại là một trong những cái ngành có thế mạnh ở Ireland và đặc biệt là ở Cork. Cũng như mọi khi nếu các bạn có bất kỳ câu hỏi gì Hãy đừng ngần ngại sử dụng phần bình luận. Các thầy cô cũng như team Education in Ireland Việt Nam luôn sẵn sàng để trả lời các bạn. À, còn bây giờ à, chúng ta sẽ cùng chào đón à, cô NASA và thầy Morris. Um, well, hello NASA and Morris. Uh, welcome to Education in Ireland Việt Nam. Uh, thank you for joining to our public talk today. Um, how are you? Very good, Hello. thanks. Uh, so, uh, uh, how is it going? Uh, so, the school is not yet uh, open, right? No, when, it's uh, when the is, university. Uh, when is uh, the UCC will, will open? What is the reopening plan? Uh, the, for the start of the next semester is on September 28th, so that's when students will be starting again. So it's a little bit later than usually planned, but yeah, so it's organized for September 28th to go ahead. And some particular students who are kind of working in the research areas and research labs have started to go back now. So there is kind of some activity of people getting back on campus already, kind of more priority research that's happening. Oh, I see. And yeah. uh, I, uh, I uh, think that the UCC would be uh, similar to other uh, colleges that uh, you would have a blended learning uh, after the uh, reopening, right? Yes, absolutely. Blended learning online and also um, some face-to-face -face tutorials. Um, in food science, we're trying to keep our labs. Labs are very, very important. Laboratory our training so very difficult to do those online so um, we figured out ways of actually delivering labs face to face to the students because otherwise the training is diminished so most classes online uh, labs tutorials face to face so very much blended as you said mm, very good very good it's very good to hear that uh, UCC uh, making a lot of effort to uh, give uh, the best uh, care and uh, Uh, best experience to students who uh, come uh, to join uh, the college uh, in September. So now I would like to uh, invite NASA to uh, make a presentation about the college. 
So I suppose just um, to say initially a big thank you to Education in Ireland for having us here today and giving UCC and the School of Food and Nutritional Sciences this opportunity to give you an overview of what the university as a whole offers the student and also what's on offer in the realm of food and nutritional sciences. So I suppose I just wanted to start off to, I suppose, set the scene in Ireland and why Ireland and study in Ireland is such an attractive opportunity for students. I suppose since Brexit, it's the main English speaking country within the, within the European Union. It's ranked uh, number one for quality of life. Um, population of 4.9 million. There's also 70 million Irish people living around the world. There's international airports. So Dublin Airport and Cork Airport. We're about one to two hours from London, Paris, Amsterdam, Berlin. So a lot of people would know of us as kind of a gateway to Europe, really. Um, Ireland has been awarded 424 million research funding um, from Horizon 2020. So this is EU's largest research and innovation program. And additionally, then there's, I suppose, equal opportunity employers where we are offering up to two year stay back visas for students upon completion of their masters. So I suppose really there are some of the broad points and I want to also touch on a critical point which is very attractive about Ireland, particularly for students coming and they're eager to start their career and build their career. Ireland in Europe and across globally is really known for, I suppose, the industry that's embedded in our country. We've 10 of the top 10 global technology companies are headquartered here. Eight of the top 10 pharmaceutical companies are based here. The top four food companies, which is obviously very, I suppose, applicable to today's talk, are also based here. Four of the top five IT service companies. There's the European headquarters of Apple, Facebook and EMC. So Ireland is thriving on an industry basis, which is very exciting for students coming here and going to, I suppose, whatever university they're choosing to go to. It's very exciting to see that level of industry involvement and engagement across the country. Um, so just a little about Cork City itself. It's important to set the scene about the city that you will be coming to study in when you kind of arrive and work and you're going to UCC. So I suppose just a funny quote for every, for anyone who might know kind of the rivalry in Ireland, everything good about Ireland can be found in Cork. So we are the second largest city in Ireland. And as you can see, we're based right at the bottom of Ireland there on kind of the south of Ireland, okay? So what's really attractive about this, as I mentioned, it is the second largest city. It's quite a cosmopolitan city with a lot of events, cultural events happening. It's also one of the safest cities in the world, which is incredibly attractive for students in coming, both to the students themselves and also to your parents to think that you could be arriving and that they can feel very comfortable that you are safe over here in Cork City. What's exciting about it as well is, yes, it's quite a vibrant cosmopolitan city, but you're also surrounded by stunning countryside and coastlines. So within 15 to 20 minutes drive, you can be out by the beach and beautiful countryside. So it has the, I suppose, you know, dual attraction of being a busy, uh, interactive city with cultural events and also having the opportunity to kind of get out to the countryside quite easily. Um, additionally, it's also easily accessible via Cork Airport. It's about 15 minutes drive from the university to Cork International Airport. And yeah, so I suppose the fact that it's easily accessible, but also is quite safe and it's, you know, it's quite, uh, I suppose, accessible by foot as well. And I'll show you some more pictures, which will kind of give you a more of an idea of that. So just to move on now from, I suppose, our lovely city to our University College Cork. Um, and I want to give you some pointers about why to study at UCC. So I've mentioned this already, and it will be a common theme throughout my presentation and throughout Morris's points as well. It's informed by research. We are ranked the top 2% of research-led universities globally. We're powered by leaders, incredibly distinguished staff working on the front lines of science, technology, arts, and business. 
And these staff, even though they're incredibly, I suppose, involved in innovative research, they're also very approachable and very friendly to students, meaning that you automatically, when you arrive, you're kind of immersed in a really supportive community, which is very important as an international student. Additionally, we're taught through best practice. We're the top 50 in Europe for teaching excellence, award-winning student supports, and also the 70% of the faculty hold an accredited teaching and learning qualification. Additionally, I suppose I've pointed it out already with the research again, but offers excellent teaching and research facilities, really modern facilities in our safe city. Uh, there's high graduate employment. That's another point you're going to hear me talking about on Mars as well. There's a huge amount of kind of industry surrounding Cork as well. And there's postgraduate training opportunities in Ireland and abroad. And there's a huge amount of kind of industry hubs surrounding the city. So the opportunities to, to get a job when you finish between the combination of the industry that's based in Cork City and the surrounding area and the opportunity to have a one to two year stay back visa really kind of compounds that ability um, to get a job when you finish, which is very important when you're, you know, when you're making that decision to travel abroad, you need to feel confident that there, there is an opportunity to build a career after you finish your studies. So I suppose I just wanted to give you a quick overview of our campus and our city and just highlight what is really kind of great points about this. Okay, so this is just an overview of the city campus on the west side. So to the kind of bottom right is the main gates of campus. So obviously we're kind of right in the city center, which is in a really attractive point because students can walk from the city center straight to campus in 10, 15 minutes, okay? And it really kind of, I suppose, you don't have to get like rely on public transport so much. And because it's so in the city, you can walk a lot of places, which students really enjoy because it means that they can be walking in and out between breaks and lectures and their hours on site. Uh, so this is kind of, let's say, the city campus east. So you can see then how it's right into the city centre. So it's very accessible. I suppose there's the two kind of the dual approaches you know, we're based in Cork City. It's quite close to Cork City. And as I mentioned before, you're also then very close to getting out to the countryside and being able to explore Ireland as well. Um, I've mentioned this and it's an incredibly important point for living in Cork and I suppose the opportunities that is afterwards, you know, for building your career and getting the job that you really want to excel in is the level of industry engagement with our university, UCC, across a range of sectors. So obviously it's not just food science I'm highlighting, it's engineering, pharmaceuticals, financial services, ICT, marine and energy. I mean, to give you some examples, just out the road a couple of miles, there's GSK, Dupuy, Janssen, Eli Lilly, uh, Pepsi is just based outside the road as well. So like it's real hub of industry for life sciences and also food science as well. So it's really attractive for students to think that they can arrive here and have that level of engagement, be it through placements that they might be doing in our programs. And also that when they finish that all these, you know, multinational companies are on our doorstep. Um, I suppose a point we've mentioned already, and I just think it's really exciting, particularly for some of our audience today, if you're interested in food science or the other science and engineering subjects that we offer, it's, it's really important that the university you choose is research leading. And, you know, this is something our university is incredibly proud of. We work very hard, the staff and students, to be innovative with, their, with our research. Um, I suppose there's European funding, 141 awards, um, the highest success rate nationally, 70 million secured. Um, I suppose what's interesting about our research is that we also offer students an opportunity to, I suppose, set up their own company as well through our Entrepreneurship Academy Ignite. So even though you're here and you're coming up with really good ideas, you're going to get a lot of support from UCC 
to kind of move your innovative idea into kind of something that can be commercialized. And I suppose to flag the level of commercialization that's happening within the research that's going on in UCC is you can see there the amount of patents being filed. So I suppose this slide just gives you a real broad overview of the level of research that's happening and how, I suppose, to the forefront in EU we are as a research university. Additionally, as an international student, it's very important that you feel that you're, you're coming where there's also lots of international students coming from other countries. So we have a very diverse and inclusive campus. Uh, UCC's student population would include international students from over 104 different countries. And 30% of our UCC staff are international. So I suppose at the moment, it's very important for me to address, you know, COVID-19. I just want to flag it. I mean, it, it would be silly to ignore what's going on in the world right now. And I wanted to just update you and give you a couple of pointers of where to get more information about UCC's response. So this slide just gives you a link here to our dedicated web page. You know, UCC is, you know, incredibly understanding that a lot of our, you know, prospective students and current students and their families have been really affected. And, you know, it's, it's a very difficult time for people. So the university staff across, you know, our academic staff, admin staff, support staff are working incredibly hard to do everything we can to answer questions as accurately and within the information that we have on the national guidelines to give our prospective and current students the answers that they need and the support that they need at this difficult time. So there's obviously a link here to an FAQ section uh, regarding COVID-19 questions that are coming up right across the board. And I would urge anyone, you know, to kind of bookmark this page so you can get the kind of most up-to-date information and to see what's happening. So just to give you an idea, what's on this FAQ page would be, we're covering a whole range of topics. So, you know, as we just discussed earlier on the call, um, would be kind of key dates, let's say the September, the September 28th as semester one start. And also the model that we're adopting is the hybrid blended learning, where we are as adhering to the national guidelines. And, you know, we are, you know, prioritizing that we are going to do as much you know, face-to-face -face learning as we can as possible with regards to national guidelines. And also that we are, like our staff are working incredibly hard to make sure that no program's quality is compromised. And we are making sure that our main priority is the safety of our students and staff. Along this, along with a lot of questions and answers about hybrid and blended learning, we also have information about accommodation advice, uh, English language alternatives like Duolingo, and the self-isolation advice and kind of protocols. And also UCC are working very hard on a transitions in program where when international students have to self-isolate, that they're supported with a program that I suppose gets, gives them an opportunity to learn a bit more about UCC while they're in self-isolation and also kind of gain a range of skills across kind of interview skills, CV writing and let's say referencing academic writing, everything. So it's really kind of, I suppose you can see the effort that's gone involved in here. The really priorities in our students staff, like and our staff's kind of safety and well-being because we're very aware that this is not an easy time for people. Um, just to, I suppose, move back to UCC, it's important to cover COVID-19 and give the page that you can go to. So UCC has four colleges. Obviously, today we're giving you a bit more information about food science, which falls under the College of Science, Engineering and Food Science. And we have three other colleges within University College Cork, Business and Law, uh, Medicine and Health and Arts, Celtic Studies and Social Sciences. Now, just to touch on these three other colleges, these three other colleges offer really amazing and wonderful programs across both undergraduate and postgraduate levels. So if you're logging in today and you're interested in University College Cork, but might be more interested in these areas, I'd urge you to go to the webpage and see what these colleges have to offer.
Um, so you can just give it, this gives a quick overview of what kind of falls in underneath each, each different college and what areas are within that. So obviously today we're focusing on the College of Science, Engineering and Food Science and particularly the School of Food and Nutritional Sciences. But you can see the kind of depth of subject areas that are covered by our university. And we have experts in a range of these fields that again, as I mentioned before, are doing leading research and innovative research in these areas. I suppose one thing I want to flag, and I'm, I'm, I'll be passing on tomorrow soon, but I suppose I'm a graduate of UCC. I attended uh, the, I'm a graduate from the College of Science, Engineering and Food Science School actually. And I also had an opportunity to study for a year abroad. And I was, so I was an international student in the US for a year. And I suppose it's very important in my experience as an international student that yes, you have you know, supportive academic staff and you have real innovative programs that you're studying, but you also need to have really strong student supports because it can be intimidating in your first few weeks in a new country and a new culture. So we have a range of dedicated student supports, which I feel is incredibly supportive for the international student arriving. So there is the international student support officers, student counseling and development, disability support office, peer assisted learning, which is a really kind of great piece where you have student ambassadors across the college and you're doing that peer to peer kind of assisted learning, which I feel students really excel from no matter what you know, part of the world you're from, it's great to be learning with your peers. There's the student medical services, work placement officers, uh, first year mentoring, the career services, one-to-one uh, -one coaching. So it's really great as an international student to know that your well-being is being prioritized as soon as you get on campus as well. And one important piece, obviously, you know, We've mentioned how important industry is to the city of Cork and the country of Ireland. So, you know, when you're traveling from a different country, you know, there's a lot of different cultural norms associated with the different workplaces of the country that you're in. And our UCC Career Services offers, offers you a range of services to make you feel really comfortable and to get you ready and prepared for the workplace that is Ireland if you're choosing to opt to use your stay back visa. So UCC career services where they are the difference. They're helping you plan your career, write your CV, prepare for interviews, running a range of workshops. They're helping you with application forms and online applications. There's a career presentation library, self-assessment and skills assessment and a range of kind of artificial intelligence and digital tools to help you, I suppose, not only when you finish, but if you're trying to go for interviews for a placement in your program, that you've the best opportunity that you are looking for. There's a lot of employer engagement as well. Let's say, for example, there's a virtual fair in October 2020. So I think this is really exciting that, yes, we have a lot of industry, but also you have the supports here to get you ready to get out to industry and start your career from here. I suppose on a social aspect, which we all think is, you know, I think as a former student of the College of Science, Engineering and Food Science, clubs and societies is a huge selling point. There's over 59 sports clubs, 95 societies. I mean, there's 40 events on campus per week. But obviously, I suppose you'd have to be very <laughs> picky about what um, events you choose. I think you'd be a very busy person with your academic learning if you were trying to attend to attend 40 society and club events as well. So there's huge kind of opportunity then to make a lot of friends outside of your academic program and kind of, you know, different build a different kind of peer network that might be within, you know, your learning area. Um, I suppose. I've mentioned a lot about UCC and Cork City. It's obviously an incredibly safe city. It's very easy to get around. The grounds are you know, very accessible from Cork City. You don't have to overly rely on, you don't have to be overly reliant on public transport. And I've also mentioned the other four, you know, the other three colleges that UCC have and the, you know, the careers and prospects out of them. There's a huge amount, I suppose, on offer from the university. 
Um, but I just wanted to give a bit more of a personal touch before I kind of pass over to Mars. So really, why is a program in, let's say, food science or our College of Food of, of Science, Engineering and Food Science for you? And I suppose I wanted to give you some of the points that, you know, I really enjoyed as well as some of the overall, you know, main summary pieces. Obviously, I've flagged over and again the employability in careers. You know, it's great and wonderful to get your international experience, but you want to feel that that's ready in you for the world. So not only do we have the industry base in Cork, but we also have the services there to get you there. Obviously, the research at UCC, if you're interested in the science and engineering and food science field, it's, it's really kind of great to be part of a university that is prioritizing research. UCC is a green campus and sustainability is a huge, I suppose, it's a huge kind of ethos in our university. And that's something to be very excited about, particularly in this field and the climate change kind of social issues that we're facing. It's incredibly important that you feel that your university matches those values that you have. Um, Cork City obviously is a food science and life science industry hub. The companies are right here and they are actively looking for UCC graduates upon graduation. And I suppose just, you know, really on a personal point of view, what really benefited me was the STEM community and the overall UCC community. Incredibly supportive, incredibly friendly, um, approachable, very professional, uh, always kind of able to kind of point you in the right direction. And, you know, I suppose in the background here, I have a picture of, you know, some of the kind of activities that we went on, on kind of field trips and such and like, and that kind of community with your friends and that peer learning and working on group projects together. It's incredibly kind of an important experience having practical learning focus, whether it's through a field trip or whether it's through a placement. It, again, it's another aspect of what UCC offers students. It's this really readying, I suppose, students for the career that they're going to kind of move into because they have practical hands-on skills okay so look thank you very much uh, i suppose for listening in today and i'm going to pass over to maris there now um if yeah you are ready <laughs> okay so thanks very much for listening today and maris is going to give you a really kind of nice overview of i suppose of the school of food and nutritional science and what we have to offer there uh, i suppose it's such a kind of modern and engaging field at the moment and it's something that people are very much interested in as well. So I'll take you over there, Mars. You might be on mute, sorry there, Mars. So hello everybody. Um, my name is Mars Sullivan. Um, I'm the International Food Science uh, direct Director for our uh, dual degree program. Uh, so today I'm gonna to talk to you about food and nutritional science here in UCC, um, our different uh, courses we have on offer, our facilities, um, our colleagues, uh, our lecturers in our, in our schools, um, also uh, our international degree program, and also a little bit more about uh, the university and setting, etc. And in my presentation, I have a few YouTube links which you can open, which are introductions to UCC and also food science uh, international degree program. Uh, you can open them at your leisure. So, um, the School of Food Interest for Science um, is uh, 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 a very well established part of University College Cork. Um, we've been teaching food science in UCC for nearly 100 years. In fact, um, the first official degree in food science. And then it was called Dairy Science, commenced in 1924 with uh, some graduates who graduated in 1928. I'll talk to you about those in a little while. So we have a very, very long established history. Um, we have a considerable national and international reputation in both uh, teaching at third level, but also uh, research um, and also collaboration with industry. And we're considered world leading in our food science teaching programs and also in our research programs. And we do collaborate extensively 
with the food industry both nationally and internationally and they would fund primarily postgraduate research but also some uh, undergraduate research. Um, so my first slide here uh, shows you some of the different processing equipment and during the course of this presentation today I'll very much expose you to um, our pilot plant facilities. We have a pilot plant facility uh, here in Cork that is the envy of any universi uh, university in the world uh, where we can virtually make any um, uh, uh, food or beverage product. Uh, we use this for undergraduate teaching but also uh, in our uh, research programs uh, but also training programs we train industry and we also have a lot of our facilities are available for industry to rent for example they can try out a new process on our pilots equipment um, optimize and then bring the technology back to their own facilities afterwards so we're very very interactive undergraduate postgraduate and also I collaborate extensively um, with industry um, the university itself uh, was established um, in 1845, so um, well over 160 60 years old now. And as I said, we have a very, very long history of teaching uh, food science. So the official degree uh, first one was in 1934, and this slide here shows uh, the very first few graduates of that uh, degree in dairy science. But prior to that, we did have courses uh, which predominantly were teaching um, scientists how to um, basically run a creamery. A creamery is a facility which you would collect milk um, uh, from farmers and then process it into uh, butter, skim milk, and also potentially cheese. So Ireland is very much an agricultural nation and we have a very, very long tradition of agricultural production. And uh, then as now, uh, we're known internationally for our dairy products. Uh, we have a lot of grass and a lot of cows. I think we have uh, 750,000 in the country. And um, over the years, the production of milk, uh, butter and cheese uh, grew nationally um, to um, export to international markets. And even over 100 years ago, uh, Cork was world renowned as the global uh, butter producer. Uh, in the world. So we have a very, very long tradition of um, food science here in Cork. So I have a, a picture here of um, the UCC campus and I've tagged all the different uh, buildings and facilities which are somehow associated with food. Okay, and the bottom half of um, uh, the slide here is our food um, uh, processing area and a lot of our food, labor food laboratories where we teach. Um, but other parts of the campus, uh, for example, food business, which, which studies the business side of uh, food manufacturing and, and selling and marketing. And also we have um, um, biosciences, which uh, investigates things like uh, the microbiome and how our microflora affect our um, physiology and also how nutrition affects the microbiome and the microflora in our, in our bodies and how that also affects our physiology. So food is very, very embedded within UCC um, across many different aspects. Um, I will mention the pilot facilities uh, uh, throughout this presentation because they are fundamental to our ethos of teaching and we have facilities which enable us to do um, a baking research so we have a fully um, established bakery which we use for teaching undergraduate students they would do the laboratory sessions in this bakery um, uh, later on i'll also talk about four chair projects in our four chair our graduates are asked to um, develop a product from scratch from idea all the way to production safety testing packaging and marketing and they can choose any product and they're they're challenged to make that product and it could be a bakery product uh, we also have um, uh, 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 the highest level of technology in our instrumentation, state of the art. Um, we are research led uh, teaching school, so we stay at the very uh, forefront of our research, um, uh, leading from the front uh, and also uh, using this research in our own teaching. And this also includes the teaching of new um, methods, devices, etc. 
We also have a fully functioning um, spray, spray drying unit, uh, which is very, very important for the Irish food industry. Um, if you consider cheese production, cheese production is when you separate uh, the solid curd uh, from the liquid whey using uh, a starter culture and also an enzyme called chymosin or rennet. And years ago, you made the cheese and the whey was really only suitable for feeding animals or pig feed. Um, however, uh, many uh, companies are now very heavily invested in uh, converting this whey into a very, very valuable ingredient. Companies like Dairy Gold, uh, Kerry Group, uh, Gambia, uh, we, we can spray dry these, these, this whey liquid into powders, which are important components of um, infant formulas, nutritional supplements, and also supplements for the elderly. So we have a full suite of spray drying facilities, and these convert uh, liquids into powders, uh, particularly uh, whey-based. And we use this again for undergraduate teaching in labs, uh, training, for research purposes, and also uh, these, uh, this equipment also is available to the food industry uh, on, a, on a lease basis where they can also undertake uh, research as well. Um, we also have a fully functioning brewery where we make uh, many different types of beer. Again, um, graduates or student, undergraduate students would um, uh, participate in laboratories in brewing where they would make beer, test beer, etc and of course taste beer, and um, uh, this is also uh, extensively used for research and collaboration with industry. We also have fully functioning meat processing area, fresh meat, processed meat, where we can make things like sausages, fermented meat products, and also we have um, extensive facilities for the manufacture of cheese, butter, yogurt, etc. Um, so we can make the full um, uh, spectrum of food and beverage products um, here in our pilot, our pilot plant here in UCC. So uh, UCC, we're very well established, we've been around for 100 years. Uh, we're considered one of the leading teaching uh, universities in food science in the world. And um, we also have a very uh, considerable reputation in research. And uh, this uh, reputation is born through a very, very extensive uh, publications. And in a little while, I'll introduce some of our uh, teaching staff and also uh, their specific teaching acumen and the areas they specialize in. And they're all uh, world leaders in their field. So we're very much a multidisciplinary school in food and nutritional science. So my next slide is on the organization of um, uh, the school of food and nutritional science and we're broken down in, into different sections. Um, the first section is food technology and this is the technology of food and beverage production. So uh, cereal technology, the technology of bakery, of beer manufacture, uh, meat science technology, the technology of fresh and processed meat production. Um, also we have dairy technology, the technology of um, for example butter, cheese, uh, powder production, etc. Any dairy product, and also we have um, many, many other aspects of food technology. Uh, of course, we teach food chemistry, which is the chemistry of carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, fats, etc., vitamins, and you know we must understand the chemistry of food in all in order to make the food and understand the technology. And leading on to that, we also study very much food nutrition. So we must understand how the foods we eat affect our bodies, both positively and negatively. And in this way, we can produce foods that are healthier um, uh, when we consume them. And this is a leading component of our research to produce uh, food which is healthier, to improve our nutrition. And that's one area that I'm specifically interested in. It's in salt, and fat reduction and sugar reduction. So salt and fat in processed meats, fat reduction and salt reduction in dairy products, and sugar reduction in confectionery products. Uh, this leads to my own personal research. And food nutrition is an area which is very, very important part of our school. Um, we also have the packaging group. If you consider a food product, 
um, no food product exists without a package. Uh, the package dictates um, its safety and shelf life. And this is very, very extensively uh, taught in our courses. Finally, we have uh, the sensory group, which I lead. I'm a sensory scientist. And this is a sensory, um, this discipline is the sensory perception of food, both hedonically, which is the liking of food, the liking of appearance, aroma, flavor. Um, and this is very much uh, a consumer type research. But also we have descriptive profiling, which is to describe foods and beverages in a very, very technical way, um, and also to analyze them uh, quantitatively. And in fact, um, the methods we use are as reproducible as any sophisticated um, a scientific device, for example, a gas chromatograph. Uh, we also teach things like multivariate data analysis, uh, how to integrate different parts of um, uh, uh, different parts of your food analysis, and of course, we teach microbiology, um, shelf life, and also food product development and optimization and instrumentation. So, it's a very, very broad, diverse area of topics that we teach within the school in our, in our undergraduate programs. Um, my next slide shows the diverse um, products that we, um, we study, we teach, show how to make and also do research on within the School of Food and Nutritional Science, uh, everything from fish, processed meats, uh, confectionery, biscuits, soft drinks, every type of cheese, a few examples here, cheddar, uh, brie, camembert, emmental, gouda, Mazdamer. Uh, we also equally do research on uh, confectionery products, uh, for example, sugar reduction in confectionery products, and we also uh, on uh, convenience foods like pies, and um, also uh, fast food as well. And of course, we do work on beverages such as milk, dairy products, but also alcoholic beverages, including uh, whiskey and beer, etc. So we work, we work, and teach and do research across uh, the product spectrum. Um, just to give you some of the background to some of the lecturers within the School of Food and Nutritional Science, um, they would be considered uh, leaders in their own areas. Um, they would teach their topics uh, in, the, in the different courses, both in uh, food and nutritional science, but also they would undertake their own research. So they would have their own research teams, they would secure funding, um, undertake their research, and they would publish very, very extensively. So uh, food, food and nutritional science is embedded in UCC, a very, very important um, part of, of our teaching programs. And the reason being is that uh, Ireland is our cultural nation. Um, uh, ag the agroeconomy accounts for approximately 8% of our GDP and employs over 160,000 people. Uh, we produce products to value in excess of 16 billion and export to at least 170 countries. So we export lots of meat products, lots of dairy products, um, and an awful lot of products to China and Asia. And predominantly, uh, the products exported to Asia would be meat products, including beef, but also things like um, dairy-based powdered ingredients or products uh, such as infant formula. So just to give you some idea of the different degree programs that we teach in the School of Nutritional Science, um, our, our mainline degree is degree in food science, four-year program, um, and at the end, the students come out with a degree in food science. Equally, our nutritional science degree program is also four years. Um, Quite often, these students go on uh, to work in industry, but also um, a significant proportion would uh, stay in the university system and undertake postgraduate research, either MSE or PhDs, either within the school or other universities. So these would be our core um, programs. And then the, ne the, very, um, the next most important, or one of our most important programs is the BSc in Food Science Technology. And this is our international degree program. And this program is set up whereby our uh, undergraduates study for two years in their home university. So for example, you could study for two years um, in your home university in Asia, and then you come to UCC in third year, and you study third year and fourth year, 
and you acquire your degree. And at the end, it's a dual degree program. You get two degrees, a degree uh, from UCC and a degree from your home, un home university. And currently we have uh, students from um, South America and also uh, very extensively from China uh, participate in these programs, but of course uh, they're open to any international student. We also have MSc in food science, um, which is a top program where you come for one year um, you do um, extensive uh, modules on food science, but also uh, um, some lab-based projects. And at the end, you get your MSc. We have PhD programs, a diploma in food science, high diploma in food science technology, and postgraduate uh, programs in dairy technology, innovation, and nutrition. And these are specifically really aimed at people who are working in the food industry. So, um, our university is very diverse uh, culturally, but our uh, food, food and nutritional science programs are also uh, populated by many, many different uh, nationalities. And we have students from Europe, but also Asia, um, including uh, lots of students from China, in fact, but also Malaysia, we have students from Africa and also from the Americas, and some of the students this year in food science were from uh, Mexico. <clears throat> so, um, in this slide, uh, internationalization, I have a little YouTube clip which you can watch at your leisure, which introduces the uh, international degree. Um, and actually, in, in this particular uh, YouTube clip, we have some of our Chinese students um, explaining in Chinese uh, their experience of food science in Ireland, but this is also um, subtitled in English. Uh, every year when our international students come, we have very extensive orientation. Um, we show our students their accommodation, we get them settled in. We give them tours of the campus. We give them training on the Canvas platform that I mentioned, on their email. Uh, we give them training on um, all different aspects of participation in, in the school. Um, show them where the labs are, where the teaching uh, halls are, etc., where the restaurants are. So for, for a whole week, we have a very, very extensive orientation program to make sure that our international students are well settled. And this year, uh, the year of this global pandemic, I'm happy to say it looks like that our international um, um, undergraduate numbers are up actually this year by at least 50%. Um, uh, for our projections. So even in this, uh, in this global pandemic, we predict an, an increase in uptake of international students into our degree programs this year. Um, as director of the international degree program, I teach obviously in Ireland, but also I do teach in Asia. Um, uh, last year I taught extensively in, in China, um, in Beijing, Shanghai, and Muji province, and also in 2017. Um, but uh, this year I also do some, I also hope to do some teaching in South America, but unfortunately could not due to the epidemic or the pandemic. But um, I personally would love the opportunity of doing more um, collaborative teaching in other uh, Asian countries. Um, UCC has some world-class facilities, and uh, in these facilities, there are our lecture teaching areas, our labs, um, including Western Gateway Building, also um, Brookfield Health Sciences Sec, um, uh, Building, and um, a Food Science Building, or Rally Building. You'll see a mixture of old and new buildings on campus. And they're specifically di designed to give the best um, teaching environment to students. All have connectivity and Wi-Fi. We, find, we, we think this is very, very important because often our international students do wish to train and have access to translation uh, software in labs. If they're not too sure of a word, they can just put it into their laptop or their phone and um, through Wi-Fi and then um, translate that word or whatever. But we do provide all our notes well in advance of lectures so uh, students can um, uh, peruse and study the notes before we actually give the lecture. Additionally to the food science uh, facilities, 
Another important aspect of the School of Nutrition Science is particip participation of our undergraduates in areas outside of uh, just learning. For example, the very extensive Maradike Sports Arena is always very, very popular with our international students. So this year, our international students, their dormitory is basically uh, less than a minute's walk away from our um, internationally renowned sporting facilities, which is the Maradike Arena. And this is a fully outfitted gym with running machines, weight machines, uh, cross trainers, etc. you name it, they have it, as well as track and field, um, uh, track and field uh, facilities for running, um, uh, a soccer and sports, rugby, and also, of course, a 25 meter swimming pool, which is also very, very popular. So our, our international students uh, get free access to the Maritime Arena and also have the um, opportunity to participate in sports on campus, everything from uh, mountaineering to rowing um, to soccer, et cetera, swimming. Um, also, NASA mentioned earlier, uh, club society is also an important part of social life in UCC, and our international students do participate. Um, I think a few this year uh, were, were, were very interested in joining the Harry Potter Society, which uh, has, is very, very popular in, in the school. Um, and I think we have over 150 different clubs and socks here in UCC. So everything from chess to fencing to Harry Potter to swimming, canoeing, you name it. And this is, I suppose, extracurricular and an enjoyable part of studying here in Cork. We do have extensive support services for our students. Um, I provide support as um, the director of our international program. Also, we have an international office. And uh, as I said, they help with, um, with orientation. Um, but we also have uh, peer support uh, and other facilities which support our students um, within uh, the School of Food and Nutritional Science, and also our students support each other. Our, our fourth year students uh, tend to look after our third year students, help them acclimatise and um, get settled in uh, to UCC, etc. So UCC is very much a fusion of the old and the new, a very uh, historic uh, campus, also uh, fused with state-of-the-art buildings and facilities. So. If I have any advice for international students, it is to study hard, learn English, to better your English, um, the better are your performance. And then on your graduation day, you will put on your gown and walk across the quad and, uh, in a ceremony um, where you receive your parchment or your degree um, from the president of UCC, Patrick O'Shea. And this is the academic procession here of all the professors. Um, and hopefully in UCC when you come, um, you will find old and new traditions and make new friends. And, um, and hopefully, if you see my last slide here, where will you be in the picture? We take a group picture of all our graduates every year uh, with their professors. So thank you very much for your time. Um, that concludes uh, this presentation today on food and nutritional science and um, thank you very much to uh, Education in Ireland. Thank you, Maurice, for a very informative uh, presentation. Uh, now, I would like to have a few questions. Uh, actually, uh, it would be for both of you. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to uh, ask uh, NASA first. Um, so, uh, uh, you hear me okay? Right, okay, good. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, NASA. Uh, uh, so we know that uh, the, uh, the 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 school year, the academic year for for upcoming year, will start at the end of September. Uh, so it would be uh, later than than usual. Uh, so uh, which uh, I and I suppose that the the whole timetable, academic timetable, would change. For example, the year end would have to be later than usual. Is this the case? No, it will be. Um, I'm not on mute there. You can hear me okay? Yeah. Um, yes, yes. yeah so I suppose 
the biggest change that the that this will make actually is more around the exams of semester one which would usually have taken place before Christmas, which will now be just taking place in mid-January. So that's really what the big difference is. And you're getting a study week then and over Christmas, whereas the university is working hard that the end of semester two will still be relatively in line, you know, with the normal end date. But there will be an effect of the exams moving out a little bit later for a semester one, and that they'll be, let's say, starting uh, semester two at the start, of January with the plans to kind of commence the exams in around the same period for semester mm. two. I see. Right. Okay. So, and uh, uh, in this case, what is the implication for tuition fees? Uh, with regards to fees, I suppose there, you know, the fees will be the same as, as they will be any other year. The reason being is that I suppose UCC and the staff are working very hard to ensure that the quality of the programs that we will offer our students will not be compromised by blended and hybrid learning. There's a lot of, I suppose, investigation into kind of simulation and online tools to make everything as interactive as possible for students and to make sure that there is the supports and everything in place so that the learning that they will receive and the teaching that they will receive, I suppose, w won't be compromised and that, you know, a graduate of next year, you know, will be no different to a graduate of any other year, really, mate. That's, you know, that's the goal of our university and they're working very hard. They've arranged committees involved with staff across the four colleges working together to ensure that this, you know, that no quality of program is compromised. Okay, good, good. Uh... And uh, another question for you that uh, um, the, uh, we all know that uh, uh, employability uh, for graduates in uh, Ireland is always among the, the highest. Uh, and uh, Irish HEIs would offer every support for you know, job placement and, and uh, to help students to find opportunities uh, after they graduate. Uh, can you uh, give an example of how would that uh, work here? Of how, sorry, me it broke how up would just that at the work? end. Uh, the support to, for students yeah, to find so... jobs uh, and, 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 you know, opportunities after graduate. Yeah. So I suppose there's a range of supports, uh, you know, it, it kind of depends on what programs people do. So if they're in undergraduate programs, there'll be, let's say, undergraduate four-year degrees or obviously the international degree that Mars mentioned where you're coming for two years. You'd have a bit more time, so they'll be working on, let's say, CV writing skills. There'll be, let's say, workshops. There'll be, there's a range of artificial intelligence kind of tools that our career services use. So to help kind of with interactive, more kind of interview skills and really helping students hone that skill because that's something that's very important for when you graduate and also for future. So I suppose there's a range of supports built in that you can help plan your career, write your CV, interview workshops. There's obviously artificial intelligence tools to kind of really kind of propel you along as well. Our UCC career service is very involved the whole way through people's programs. Additionally then on the other side, which you touched on, we also offer a range of services to, I suppose, help students get the placement that they want. Again, you know, different programs offer placements within industry. So it's ensuring that you know, obviously the student is ready and supported and ideally getting the, you know, the placement that they really want and preparing the student to interview, get their CV ready, get their CV up online, teach them about kind of, you know, Irish job boards and Irish kind of career boards as well. Uh, so that's kind of, I suppose, all the services that's offered at undergraduate and postgraduate, but also, I suppose, on to that, some of our postgraduate degrees, particularly in the um, College of Science, Engineering and Food Science, they would actually be getting contacted before they even commence their master's because there'd be a lot of, like uh, some of those programs have placements associated. So the interviews for those placements could take place in October or November. 
So the career service actually reaches out before the student is ever maybe even in Cork or Ireland in during the summer and gets, I suppose, the student ready so that if they are doing an interview in October, they're given the best opportunity to have their CV ready, to have interview skills. And again, what I mentioned before, I suppose, is to have tips on the kind of cultural norms of the Irish workplace as well. So there's all these programs. And then there's another piece that really I'm not sure if I flagged enough before. There's a huge amount of employer engagement. So right across the four different colleges, there's obviously virtual fairs that are run, but also there's, let's say, kind of employers coming in and talking to students and interacting in the different areas. So in addition to the supports that in place, you're also kind of given an opportunity for networking skills as well and to get used to talking to multinational employers. So it's kind of a twofold service where you're developing your skills and your communication skills so that you're comfortable in an interview environment and you understand the cultural norms and you're also actually getting exposed to the industry as well. And I suppose from my background, I would have um, worked in recruitment for multinational companies uh, for engineering, life science and food science companies. And I mean, I just cannot, I suppose, I cannot kind of, over, you know, really reiterate the point that really they are just the graduates from UCC across, you know, all four colleges are very sought after. You know, there's huge amount of kind of employment. And I know a lot of people talk about life sciences and food science in Cork. But I suppose it's important to bear in mind that in these companies, they'll have their shared service centers there as well. So there'll be a huge amount of opportunities across even the business and law graduates as well. So, you know, it, it's quite kind of, I suppose, um, it's quite multifaceted, the industry here. So between the opportunities that are lying kind of on the doorstep of the university and the industry engagement and kind of the access to employers, it's really great. And then the student has been prepped in quite a lot of detail and they often get one-to-one -one coaching if they might be finding a certain bit hard. So between all of that kind of collectively, you're really getting students quite confident and giving them the best chance. Okay, uh, well, it sounds very uh, good, uh, very good support to students. And now some question uh, to you, Morris. Uh, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm uh, just uh, curious about, you know, the, 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 uh, the uh, in food science program and uh, the students get to work in laboratories, uh, they get to spend time, a lot of time in laboratories. And uh, I'm just curious, uh, do they also work in farms? In farms? Yes. Do they have opportunity uh, to work with the farmers or in, in farms? Uh, well, well, actually, we, we had a separate degree program in UCC uh, in, in agricultural science. And it only started last year. So currently, our, our graduates would not work on farms per se. Um, but it, it, the, the, the agricultural science students would. So we do have a degree in agricultural science. Mm, mm, I see. So it would be the agricultural science uh, program. I see. I see. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, what uh, struck me in your presentation is uh, the fourth year students do project from idea to packaging and sound like that they all, it means that they also learn other subjects such as marketing and uh, yeah, in the program, not only uh, food uh, per se, and then yeah, the yes, science absolutely. of food. And quite, quite, quite often what you find is that um, students develop these new products and in fact they would be very good business ideas if they wanted to follow them up. So um, basically it's a situation where they can practice everything they learned. They have learned to make a product, to understand it chemically, uh, uh, physically, uh, from a food safety perspective, and what you must do to protect it uh, using packaging. Also, what you must do to make sure that it tastes great using sensory science. And then at the end, uh, they would come up with a brand um, and also, uh, you know, a targeted consumer demographic. So very, very important part of the degree, uh, an opportunity where they can actually, um, you know, in a hands-on fashion, apply everything they've learned. So mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, and it it means like a more like a cross disciplinary. Uh, Absolutely. Program. Yeah. We try and nurture what we call holistic learning. So it's, you know, the global understanding of food science. So you know that if you have a certain chemical composition of a food or beverage, it potentially could have certain, you know, spoilage or pathogenic criteria. What are the physical treatments you must use for, to prevent those pathogenic or spoilage microorganisms? And what technology can you use to, you know, prolong shelf life and safety? So. You, it's, it's cross-disciplinary, as you say, very much holistic learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, good. Brilliant. And uh, you, uh, I, I'm not sure if you may have heard that uh, in Vietnam uh, now, so for the last few years, we have uh, Irish milk uh, um, now. Uh, I can buy Irish milk at the supermarket now. Uh, for example, Anka Milk uh, and recently Avon Moore the very well-known brand uh, yeah yeah and uh, and and my family loves uh, to drink the uh, avon more and uh, and uh, they all use the traceability technology and yeah. can you uh, give a brief explanation about this about traceability Sure, sure. Well, I think well, I think I can say we have one of the safest uh, food and beverage production systems in the world, and it's all based on traceability. So it starts basically when a calf is born. When a calf is born, um, it has an ear tag, and attached to that ear tag is all this information on um, its parents, uh, the inoculations it's had, um, any issues it had from a, a veterinary perspective. Um, also when uh, this calf grows up and will either go in as meat into the meat system, full traceability of that meat um, from the factory to wherever it goes in the world. And also if that calf go, uh, grows up and becomes a dairy cow producing milk, then full tracking of that milk th uh, throughout the, um, the distribution chain, either as milk as a product, or if it's milk as an ingredient, it goes on to, for cheese production or butter production or powder production, uh, then everything is recorded. So it's fully, fully traced, uh, even when it ends up in, in Vietnam, all the way there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it uh, sounds like, a, it's, it's a brilliant thing. Uh, it sounds like uh, you can trace the milk uh, back to the cow. Yes. To almost. the individual cow. Interesting. Almost. <laughs> almost. In some circumstances, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, and um, and I think on a related note, uh, and now uh, we are in this uh, in this um, uh, time, uh, everywhere in the world, uh, people talk about sustainable food industry. And can you? Name a few key sustainability factors. Yes, I suppose I suppose we're very conscious now about sustainability and, and some of the ingredients we might traditionally use, which uh, are very effective ingredients in the food industry. Uh, for example, uh, soya, uh, for example, palm oil. Um, they're wonderful ingredients, but maybe they're not so wonderful for the environment, mainly because um, in parts of the world, we're chopping down the rainforest to grow these crops. Okay, so um, I suppose we're teaching sustainable, ethical food production, and uh, whereby the producers, no matter where they are in the world, uh, should be fairly paid for their crops, not exploited, and that we do use ingredients that don't destroy the environment. So, for example, if we, if we if we keep using palm oil, we're going to keep chopping down the forest or uh, soya. So we're looking at alternative ingredients which will produce the same, I suppose, uh, functionality, um, but minimizing the impact uh, on the environment, but also making sure that the farmers are paid properly. Mm -hmm. And also mm -hmm. production as well, coffee production. Mm -hmm. Uh, good, uh, very interesting. And uh, another question that I'm not sure that uh, 
uh, and either of you can help to answer this is that uh, uh, I read uh, that uh, UCC is one of the world's most sustainable universities and what is, does it really mean uh, you know uh, in, in teaching and learning and in the campus and for students well I can take a crack at that now if you like uh, basically, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a whole ethos about sustainability. Um, you know, our, our children all grow up with, um, you know, uh, they, they put the recycling in the recycling bin, the rubbish in the rubbish bin, and the, the biodegradable in the compost bin, whatever. So children are learning about sustainability in, when they're small, all the way through primary school and secondary school. Um, then when they come to UCC, you know, simple things like having automatic lights. You know, the lights only come on when someone walks down the corridor, they're not a light on all the time, um, or recycling in our canteens, um, these type of things. So it's really kind of a, an ethos we've kind of adopted in university, both, um, you know, if we're teaching sustainability, we should also live in a sustainable way. And that's basically what we're endeavoring to do. Uh, with our students mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and to avoid uh, using uh, disposable, uh, you know, cutleries yeah. uh, and bottles and so on, I, I think. Absolutely, uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. Uh, and last uh, question uh, for Nasia here. Uh, um, it's certainly for you. Uh, uh, the scholarship. Uh, the question that I get asked uh, most of the time uh, from the, our Vietnamese student is scholarship and can you say a little bit more about scholarship opportunities at UCC and uh, especially at your school? Yeah, so there is obviously scholarships um, available across undergraduate and postgraduate across uh, four, the four different colleges. So, you know, if there are students listening who are interested in the other areas, I would advise them to kind of look at as well. Um, so they're obviously for the College of Science, Engineering and Food Science uh, for undergraduates interested in the undergraduate uh, degrees that we offer. Um, so there is up to 25% uh, merit-based scholarship depending on people's results. So there is that for undergraduate. Uh, there's, these are just the very kind of commonplace uh, scholarships. Uh, there's obviously more specific to industry um, scholarships available which are quite detailed and they're on the website and then for postgraduate it's a merit-based scholarship so let's say um, a 2-1 equivalent uh, is a 20% uh, scholarship on the fees and um, or, uh, sorry a 1-H equivalent is 20% a 2-1 equivalent is 10% and then there's um, a thousand off for everyone else as well then. So there is two merit-based scholarships for both undergraduate and postgraduate, and they're very straightforward as well. Um, and then obviously there's more industry specific um, uh, scholarships available, like there's an Eli Lilly scholarship and everything like that available, but that will be associated with the stream that the student will be interested in going into. Mm -hmm. And uh, all this information can be found on the yeah, UCC the website. International yeah. Office yeah, on the International Office UCC website. So our International Office, are, we have a huge admissions and support team there for international students and they provide a detailed amount of information. So everything on their website from entry requirements to scholarships, to fees, to supports, to accommodation information is all on that website. It's quite detailed. Um, so it's the International UCC website. Mm -hmm. Um, well, thank you so much for uh, Maurice and Nasia for your presentations. Um, and now I would like to invite you to uh, uh, say a few words, uh, saying goodbye to our followers. Um, well, th thanks very much for having us today. You might want to say a few words after Nasia and a uh, pleasure uh, talking to, to you all today and maybe we'll We'll see you in Cork one day studying food science. Yeah, and I suppose on behalf of UCC and the College of Science, Engineering and Food Science, really thanks for, I suppose, listening in today. We hope we kind of gave you some excited points on our city, our university, and like what I suppose food and nutritional science is all about and the opportunities you have. 
And I suppose a big thank you uh, to Education in Ireland for this opportunity as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I would like to say a few words in Vietnamese to uh, uh, thank our followers. Các bạn thân mến, chúng ta lại vừa cùng nhau lắng nghe một bài giảng nữa của trường University College Cork về ngành food science. Như vậy là hôm nay chúng ta đã học được thêm về một cái ngành mới là mọi những cái sữa mình uống hay là pho mai hay là bánh bơ để làm bánh tất cả những cái đó đã được uh, sản xuất ra như thế nào nó đã được nghiên cứu và và uh, uh, đưa ra thị trường như thế nào uh, từ từ uh, con bò từ đồng cỏ từ, tới con bò và đến uh, đến siêu thị và đến bàn ăn của chúng ta như thế nào uh, chị uh, hy vọng rằng uh, chúng ta đã cùng Uh, học hỏi thêm được những thông tin bổ ích và lý thú uh, Xin cảm ơn tất cả các bạn đã xem uh, bài giảng ngày hôm nay uh, Và hãy tiếp tục đón xem bài giảng uh, tiếp theo vào thứ năm tuần tới lúc 19h30 Còn bây giờ xin tạm biệt và hẹn gặp lại